that you could take away with more than our evening social mixers. So uh, I would like to present to you uh, our two guest speakers for our Yep Yak Power Lunch. Uh, we have Mike Ganzo and Matt Pauliak, oh, I'm sorry, closed back. And their whole mission at Voice of Reason Consulting is to turn business owners into CEOs. So I thought like that way, we have young event planners, event industry people here. It would be a great kickoff to the new year, to 2016. And we can uh, have a very prosperous uh, uh, year with poetry. They're two, they are both two serial entrepreneurs who work with business owners and help them harness the entrepreneurial spirit to grow their business. So it's my pleasure to, uh, I know we all have to leave, some people have uh, further obligations after this. So I'd rather uh, introduce you to them right now and let them take the floor. Uh, okay. Give a round of applause to... Well, good morning, afternoon everyone. And uh, so I'm Mike Ganzo, this is Dan Rocha. And uh, we are the Voice of Reason Consulting. I guess we came that way because uh, we uh, started a company and uh, we actually were fortunate enough to have grown it quite successfully over 15 years. And we got the opportunity to sell it to uh, a uh, public company. And um, we've been doing consulting with various other companies for many years. About five years ago, we formed Voice of Reason Consulting. Again, as Sean said, to harness the entrepreneurial spirit of business owners. Now, so often we talk about the accidental business owner. Um, and I guess once upon a time, I was the accidental business owner. I woke up one morning, I've been working for the man for about five years, doing a lot of different things. And I said, hey, I can do this. I have to listen to this BS from someone else. I'm just as good as they are. And I went out, I found this character, and uh, wrestled him to the ground because he was going to run away to California with a beautiful blonde, but he said, no, no, you can't do that. This is a true story, I'm not making this up. And we, we actually did uh, own a company, and uh, we had great success for that first year. Um, and then we had terrific disappointment and failure in year two. And what we came to the understanding is that what you do, what you do to get to that first level of success and you've done everything right to get there. doesn't necessarily work to get you to that next level. And you gotta do something different. So here's, this sheet is a little bit about doing something different. This is really being about predictive and deterministic in your business. It's really taking a look at the prior year or the past and then making some determinations for the future. So we do this every year. Typically we do this in early January. So if we had met, and that's actually where we met Sasha and Sean at a networking meeting in January, where we had an opportunity to do this interactively with a group of people. So we're going to do this with you, and we're going to call on you, whether you like it or not, I hope. And um, so this is that opportunity to really take charge. So uh, the first question is, you know, again, when you are building your business and scaling it, or going from one year to the other, it's really critical to look at the back, look at the past, so that you can be predictive for the future. So the first question is, what do you feel were yours and your company's most significant professional accomplishments this past year? So you could think of revenue, you could think of hiring people, you could think of something that you made different. Now I'm going to ask Matt, so Matt will get us rolling. And you tell us, Matt, what was your... So, um, for 2015, I think um, we made some real impact with several of our clients. A couple of examples. One, uh, we had a client that was focused mostly on revenue, and we got him to really think about his gross margin and what was coming to the bottom line. Um, which, uh, and he's been focused on revenue for about 25 years, so... I think that was an accomplishment for us. Also, um, we had a client that was very focused on doing projects. So he was going after large projects, you know, $100,000 projects. And he'd do, the, he'd, do, he'd do the project and then there was no revenue. He had to get a new project. Well, we uh, changed his business to be focused on continuing revenue. So uh, this was a security, this is a security company. And we got them to, him to focus on doing uh, cloud-based services that brought him monthly continuing revenue. Right, so those are two examples of something that we did as business consultants, which is what we are. So, 
Chris, what would you, how would you answer this question to yourself? the first to offer um, that at a, at a much lower cost to the client. So we released just the software independent of the booth, so anybody with a camera and a computer could generally use this. Uh, and we uh, started a tech support line, so five days a week, you can actually call a human being uh, and you know, start out the software. Okay. All right, anybody else want to volunteer? Or do I call... Ah, okay, and you are? Mark. Okay, Mark. All right, so I have, uh, for many years, I've been in business for over 40 years. Uh, I'm only 15 years old. But, and, you know. <laughs> I so, that Mark. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I have two businesses, and actually my, my wife of 45 years and I are partners on this business. Uh, I've been in the music business for over 40 years, working at the highest level, producing events, massive programs, et cetera traveling all over the world, and I also have a system integration company where we do controls for lighting, video, audio, sort of, you know, build your studio. Mark, can I, honestly, yes. clubs are good, but what I... I'm trying to explain what I do. Okay, I'll shorten it. Anyway, I have these two businesses, and one of them was interfering with the other. So I decided I had to retire myself from the music business because I was finding I was not able to service my clients in the other business. Yes, and I apologize for coming. No, no. Did it work? It has been, yes. Um, so, all right. I'm gonna, I'll ask you another question about 2016. Yeah. Yes. Anyone else? Yeah? Okay. Tell us your name. Oh, it's uh, Hi, uh, my name is Julianne. Um, I'm a residential real estate broker. My firm uh, is here in Manhattan. Uh, it's called Compass. Um, I would say our, um, our most significant um, accomplishments, uh, my particular ones were increased revenue uh, and diversification of my business, which I think actually contributed to that, and I'm hoping we all lead to an even better year in this year. And my company uh, had a big uh, uh, expansion this year, so we opened 10 offices uh, around the United States in pretty significant markets. And uh, we've also are on the leading um, front of innovation of real estate technology, which is helping our clients. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? As we move on to the next question, unless somebody wants to volunteer and says, hey, I want to say something. I'm looking. All right, let's go to question two. What do you feel were yours and the company's most significant professional disappointments? That should be challenging. Disappointments. Well, let, all right, you know what, Matt? I'm not going to volunteer, so we don't need to find out what your disappointments are because I already know, know them. Hey, good everyone. My name is Omar um, Morgan. Um, after about six months of working on my biggest commercial deal, it uh, literally fell apart and died basically the week of closing. Uh, you know, normally that would have destroyed me. Just thinking about the financial impact and all the work put into it. But, uh, you know, luckily I've been in the business enough to just, you know, I did everything I could, so I had to move on to the next one. So, uh, I think you can say that to get past it. Anyone else? I'm not calling you for that, but I don't think you had it, and I just did. Amanda, you want to answer? Here we go. Hello, everyone. My name is Amanda. Um, 
I am a co-founder of a health tech startup, and I would say the biggest disappointment is that we haven't been growing as fast as we were hoping to grow this year, or past year. Uh, but this year is much better. So. Thank you. So, uh, one of my biggest disappointments is when we have a client that we know uh, what they should do to drastically change their business, but for whatever reason they won't take our advice. Uh, sometimes it's, a, it's, in their mind it's a good reason, but uh, we know that if they do X, they'll have a result Y, which they want, but for some reason they can't pull the trigger. That's, that's very disappointing and frustrating for us. Yeah, the life of a consultant. All right, Chris, have you been thinking about an answer to either of these two questions? I'm new to all this. I'm new to it. So I'm learning as I go. You're not that. Not you. What's your name? My name's Marina. Hold that mic. Um, I think uh, one of the significant professional disappointments in the last past year was uh, consistency and uh, not going as fast as I could because there's a lot of hard work that it was put by me personally but I don't see the result that I was looking for. Yeah, we often hear that that's always a struggle. How do you get past the two hands or ten fingers and get to that next level? That's always a challenge. You know, you define your level of success, and then you redefine that level of success. And in redefining it to get to that next level, everything you've done to get first level doesn't necessarily work. And really, that's the challenge. How do you then scale up? How do you get past your two hands, your ten fingers, your mind, etc.? So uh, that's uh, that is the enigma. All right. So we're going to move on because we don't have a lot of time, and I am terrible at managing the clock, so. All right, so let's move to internal and self-reflections. So what's the one thing, if you stop doing in the next 12 months, will make you a more effective CEO, owner, partner, employee of your company? So that's really the challenge. What, what were you doing that you now know you have to stop doing to get yourself to that next level? All right, we're gonna let Matt answer this one. Is there something I should start doing like? Oh, yes, there's a lot. <laughs> so, um, I think at times I'm uh, a little too focused on numbers with our clients and um, need to sometimes have a, a uh, I'll say, a higher level of view. But uh, that's sort of where I, I guess I'm comfortable with. So, uh, I think focusing less on numbers and a little more strategically. Great, let's see what 2016 does for both of us. I think that's really good. Omar, I mean, I'm uh, sorry, just like a, an Omar from my net yesterday. Sean. Yeah, him and I are brothers, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one of the things I have to stop doing is uh, partly uh, saying yes to too many people or responsibilities. So I'll, I, I will take on a task thinking I've finished the previous one, knowing I didn't finish it, but I, I will get to it to finish it, and I realize it wasn't completed as it thoroughly that it should be. That's good. So, um, tell us your name. My name is Judy, and I think I need to stop getting so personal on the events. Because when I do events, I want to be there from the beginning to the end, and I have to probably <laughs> let it go. I delegate it, but I want to be there. I want to feel you know, what the client is getting, and I see being a lot of time consuming. 